I have another flashlight review for you. This time, it is the D1 from Mubin, a company I've never heard of before. If you're interested in knowing more about the D1 and the company Wubin and why I like this flashlight, keep watching. All right, before we begin, I just want to point out that I did not pay for this flashlight. It was sent to me for testing review, but I'm receiving no compensation for the making of this video. All right, so I received this flashlight some months ago from the company Wubin after they had reached out to me and offered to send it to me. Now, I had never heard of the company Wubin before. They did say that they were the largest manufacturers of flashlights in the world. I wasn't aware of that. Maybe you were. By the way, if you have any experience with Wubin flashlights, then uh, please put them in the comments section at the end of the video because I'd be interested in hearing more. So I did do some research, some background checking on Wubin, and they had a number of flashlights that I was quite interested in taking a look at, different from most of the flashlights from other manufacturers, at least ones that I have seen, or at least ones that I've tested myself. So this is the flashlight that Wubin did send to me for testing and review. It is the D1 model, and I I've had it for some time, as I mentioned, and I just arrived back from a two-week car camping trip with my wife, Gina, and I used this flashlight exclusively during that time, and i really come to appreciate what it is capable of and all the features that go with it. So I have quite a bit of experience now that I can actually talk about with this flashlight. All right, now let's get down to the tabletop. I'll go over the specifications for the flashlight. I'll go over its modes of operation. We'll get outside and do some demonstration. Then I'll come back and give you my feelings on this flash, both the pros and the cons, and then we'll wrap up. Okay, before we go over the flashlight in detail, I wanted to show you what else came with it. So set the flashlight aside. This is the box that my flashlight arrived in. Uh, yours will look different if you purchase one of these flashlights. This is set up for re flashlight reviewers like myself, so it's just a little bit of a different looking box. However, the contents remain the same. And the contents begin with a product information card and the specifications on the back. You do get receive an, uh, a lanyard. I chose not to put mine on. You receive a set of O-rings, two, two pair of O-rings, and I recommend you keep those handy, and I'll talk more about those in a few moments' time. And you do receive a rather unique charging cable. So not only is it set up for USB Type-C charging, but it also acts as a discharging cable in that you can use this plugged into your battery to recharge another device through this port on the side, which is a USB port as well. And I'll demonstrate that in a few minutes time. <clears throat> All right, let's look at the flashlight. So the flashlight overall length is 4.13 inches, which is 105 millimeters. The diameter is 0.93 inches, just under one inch, which is 23.5 millimeters. It comes in at 3.8 ounces or 109 grams with the battery installed. Now I say that for a reason because a lot of the flashlight manufacturers give you the weight with the the, without the battery which of course is not the way we carry flashlights, so it's much better to know the weight with the battery, and I did confirm that on my scales. It has a bi-directional pocket clip, a rather nice pocket clip, very deep carry, and the other direction, it, meaning it could be installed on a ball cap if you wanted to use it as a headlamp. Now it is rather heavy for that, but it could be used to free your hands up so you'll have two hands free to do whatever you need to for at least a short period of time. It has a magnetic tail cap, which is actually quite strong, and I'll talk in a few minutes' time about how I used that when I was out camping with this flashlight. It has an IP68 ingress protection to dust and water, and water down to two meters submergent. Now, this was something I was not familiar with. What does an IP68 stand for? Because I was used to reading IPX8, so I did a little research into this, and I thought you might be interested. So the designation means IP stands for ingress protection, the numbers that follow stand for first dust protection, and then water protection. If your flashlight comes with an IPX8, it means the X stands for the fact that it was not tested for dust intrusion, but it was tested for water. So this flashlight was tested and received the highest level of protection against dust and water, resulting in the IP68 
uh, designation for it. It does also have a 1.5 fall protection. So it, uh, one of the unique features about this is that it has a 175 degree wide angle floodlight and it does have a central hotspot and I should be able to show you how that is operated. You can see what looks like a small lens in the center of the rather shallow reflector and that gives it the central hotspot which is nice to have in addition to the floodlight. It has a max beam output of 130 meters, not a long distance but for what I like to use this type of a flashlight for, that's plenty distance. So let's go over the output for the flashlight. So it has a high of 100 and, or excuse me, a high of 1100 lumens which will last for 30 seconds before the protection circuitry brings it down to 400 lumens where it will run for another two and a half hours. On medium it'll run for or it'll have 300 lumens of, of light and that'll run for five hours. On low it will has 100 lumens and that'll run for 30 hours and on moon it has a five lumen output for 150 hours. It does have a strobe which runs at 2800 lumens and it has an SOS mode which runs at 300 lumens. Now it is powered by a USB Type-C 18650 battery. Now that's a little bit different than most flashlights and I'll demonstrate what it looks like. So the tail clip does have a spring in it and there's also another spring inside which between the two of them add to the fall protection to absorb some of the shock. Now this is the 18650 battery that came with it. It has its USB-C port built into it so there is no external way of charging the flashlight it has to be dismantled so that you can get at this. Now at first I thought that was a, a bit of a con and, and it may be a bit of a con but it's certainly not a deal breaker and this is how they achieve that level of protection for both dust and water. So there is no port on the outside of the flashlight where either dust or water can get inside of it. Now there is one small issue with this which hopefully I won't have to demonstrate and what I mean by that is when you put the battery in there is an o-ring running around the top of the threads here and I have had occasion where it's putting the tail cap back on the o-ring was kind of pushed out a little bit and I had to back off and start again. Let's see if it happens this time. I find that if I'm slow and take my time and just watch Good, it worked that time. Now, it's only happened a couple of times to me where the, a little bit of the O-ring would start to push up out of the, the threading there. And it's for that reason that I mentioned that you might want to keep the O-rings, the spare O-rings around just in case you accidentally damage the O-ring. I don't see that as something likely to happen, but it's good to have those spare O-rings around for that reason. Now, I have not had to recharge this from a dead battery. Uh, it don't, the recharge, and I've only had to recharge it once, or twice, I guess, once when I first got it, and then just recently I recharged it again. But the uh, specifications call for a four-hour recharge of the battery from a, a dead state. Now, I've only, as I mentioned, I've only had to recharge it once, and that's after two weeks of use while I was out camping with this. So it uh, it's not something you're going to have to charge a whole lot depending on your usage of course but for two weeks of camping that's not bad. I did have to recharge it when I got home not because it was dead just because it was depleted and it was time to recharge it. Speaking of recharging it there is a battery level indicator built into the on off button and it has both a blue light and a red light built into the on off button. So if the blue light is on and constant that means you have between 90 and 100 percent of your charge. If the blue light is flashing that means you have between 40 and 90 percent of your charge. If the red light is on and constant that means you have between 50 and 40 percent of your charge left and if the red light is flashing that means you have less than 15 percent of of your battery charge left and charge left and it's time to recharge it.
All right, let's go over the modes of operation for the Wubin D1 flashlight. Everything is done from the on-off switch right here. And I just want to take a moment to talk about the on-off switch because there's a unique feature about it that I want to show you. So it does have a rubberized button right there that gives you a good tactile feel and it has a nice click when you depress it. But what I really like about this, hopefully it'll show up, is it's built into a raised area right here and that allows me to feel right away where my thumb is in relation to the on off button so I can find it quite quickly without having to look at the flashlight. It provides a secondary function. Now this flashlight I showed you does have a pocket clip but if I was to remove that on quite tightly, lay this down on the table, that raised area keeps it from rolling too far so it's not going to roll off of a table and drop to the floor. Uh, not a huge thing but just a nice extra but of course if you have your pocket clip on, it's not going to roll off the table anyway. So as I mentioned, all operations are done from the button right here and I'll start by turning it on in the moon mode. So this is moon mode. To turn it up, hold the button down. That's low, medium and high. Turn it off and turn it back on. It'll come back on in the last lumen setting that you used it. So it has that memory function. Now let me take it back down to the moon beam. Now from moon, low and medium, if I double press, it takes it immediately up to high. So in that way, it is similar to accessing turbo mode on other flashlights. If I have it on high, and just let's take it up at one, two, three, there, so I am on high. If I double click, I get the strobe mode. And if I double click again while in strobe, that's when I get the SOS mode. So if I turn it off, it just goes back to high. And once again, take it down to moon mode. So there is one more feature on the D1 flashlight that I want to share with you. And I wanted to take a moment to try and explain this because this is something I found to be especially valuable to me while I was out camping with this flashlight. And that is there is a blue light built into the on-off switch. I mentioned that a minute ago as part of the battery level indicator. But that blue light is also referred to as a breathing light by Wubin. And what that means is that when the flashlight is turned off, the blue light will intensify and then decrease. So slowly come on, slowly come off, simulating breathing, I guess. And the value of that is, is when I had this in my tent, laying on the floor, ready for me to pick it up and go outside, I could find it without any troubles at all by that blue light. So I, I, I did find that that was quite valuable in uh, that it wasn't so bright that it lit up my tent, but just enough so I could find the flashlight in the dark. Now, you may not like to have that blue light coming on and off, so that's an easy fix. From the off state, if I press twice quickly down on the on-off switch, it will disable the breathing light, press it again from the off position, it'll re-enable the flash, the breathing light. A unique feature for sure, something I've not seen on any other flashlight and works really well. I like this better than having it in the moon mode because although five lumens is not very bright, inside of a dark tent, it actually is quite bright. Unless you really feel the need for that, uh, then uh, you know why waste the battery and why have all that additional light uh, when the blue blue breathing light, say that five, five times, will do the job for you. So the D1 does not have a lockout mode, meaning there is no sequence of pushes on the on-off switch that will cause it to lock out and prevent accidentally being turned on in your pocket, maybe you're in your backpack. But what you can do with this is give it a quarter turn on the battery and that'll disengage the circuitry so that the flashlight won't come on. It's not something I use often, but it's nice to know you can do that. Now let me just finish taking the battery out of the flashlight because I want to demonstrate how this would be used as a power bank to power other devices. So I mentioned that if you, with the use of the included USB-C Type-C charging cable, if I click it in and it has a nice solid engagement there 
and then use another cable to run from this port to another device, I can recharge that device from this battery. And there's enough juice or power in one of these batteries to recharge most cell phones, provided that this battery is fully charged. So if your cell phone is your priority because you uh, need it, because maybe you're a little lost or you need to reach out to the outside world, then you can use your flashlight to charge your battery. Okay, having gone over the modes of operation and the specifications for the D1 flashlight, let's get outside and do some demonstrations. All right, before we begin, I just wanted to show you the blue breathing light or the breathing blue light, whichever one it is, how it fades in and out, making it easy for you to find this in the dark on the floor of your tent or on maybe on your nightstand at home. All right, let's do some demonstrations, starting off with the moon. Let me step out into the camera view. So with Moonbeam, you're probably not going to see a whole lot. I can see, oh, I don't know, 20, 30 feet in. I would not be able to ma maneuver through the woods, but uh, uh, certainly I can see what I'm doing inside of enclosed space. Let's take it up to low. Low is actually pretty good, pretty good. Uh, I really like how this wide angle beam is engaging or how it's uh, showing me everything. I could easily walk through the woods with this, bring it up to medium. Yeah, you know, I, I would probably use medium most of the time. I mean, that's going 100, 150 feet easily into the woods. As far as the trees are out there, I can see. Uh, yeah, it, I don't think I would use high too often unless I really needed that extra boost. Let's take it up to high. And there we go, all kinds of power, all kinds of power. Walk out here a little bit. All kinds of illumination out here. All right, as I mentioned when I opened up this video, I really do like this flashlight. So let me tell you what it is I like most about it. So I think first and foremost has to be the wide angle floodlight that this provides. At 175 degree angle beam, I can see everything around me. And I've, that really works with me and the style of use I have for this flashlight, which is primarily in the woods at night, of course, or even at home for that matter. Um, that wide angle just allows me to pick up everything around me. It does have a bit of a hot spot spot in the center as you saw that does give me a little bit more intensity but not so great that it distracts from the wide angle beam so yeah I think that's probably what I like most about it I have really come to appreciate the breathing blue light that's built into the on off button as I mentioned earlier just having that in my tent with me uh, means I'm going to be able to find it in the dark. Now, yes, I could put this on moonlight and leave it there because it's got such a long runtime on moonlight, but that's actually more light than I need in a tent. Uh, yeah, it, the moonlight, even at that intensity, is quite a bit of light. And uh, so it's, I prefer that little flashing blue light on the side of it. I really like the tail cap, the, the magnetic tail cap on this. I didn't think I would have a lot of use for it because I'm not going to be using it. Well, I didn't foresee using this for, say, repairing something on my car. But, you know, one of the things I found is that on the side of my cot, um, it has a metal joints for where it folds up. And, well, it's aluminum framing, but uh, steel joints. This just snaps right on. And then I was able to illuminate the tent with this and keep my hands free, allow me to change or find whatever it is I'm looking for on the floor of my tent and have my hands free. So, yeah, the magnetic tail cap is really quite nice. I'd love like the fact that it can be used or the battery can be used as a power bank for recharging other items. I don't see myself using that very often, to be honest, because I carry power banks when I go camping uh, just for emergency more than anything else. And well, because of the video equipment I have, I have to have power banks to keep them charged. But it's nice to know that if I did need it and I have my charging cable with me, then I could use it to charge something else. Now, what do I not like about the flashlight? It's not so much what I don't like because these are not deal breakers by any means. It's just things, things I think are room for improvement. Uh, the one that's hard to get around with the way this flashlight is designed is the internal battery where you have to charge it on the battery itself and you can't charge the battery from outside of the flashlight with an external port. The fact that I have to remove the battery from the flashlight 
Again, not a deal breaker. It's more of a hassle than anything else. And as I mentioned, I haven't had to do that very often, charge the flashlight. I only had to recharge it once after its initial charge and using it for two weeks camping. Um, the reason I don't like that is not so much that it takes effort to take it apart because, you know, what's that? It's the fact that I'm not liking how it occasionally will grab the O-ring when I'm putting the tail cap back on and then force it up between the threads. Uh, that just to me seems like sooner or later I am going to ruin that O-ring and have to use one of the replacements. You know, I think that's not likely to happen, especially if I'm careful. And maybe it helps to have a little petroleum jelly on the on the O-ring as well, just to add it to make it more run smoothly and keeps the O-ring from deteriorating over time. So uh, that's a relative con. Again, not a deal breaker. The other thing is the pocket clip. Now, I like the deep carry uh, of that pocket clip, but what I kind of would like to see improved is the fact that it can only be carried with the lens up in my pocket. I would really like the option of being able to install the clip so that I can carry lens down just to offer a little bit more protection to the lens while it's in my pocket. And I don't see that as something very difficult for the company to achieve the way that this flashlight is designed with its knurling. It's just a means of, of recessing another portion of the knurling so that the clip, which is removable, and off could be placed on the other end so I could carry it tip down. So minor things to be sure, but things I just wanted to make you aware of. Now, before I close this video out, I want to mention that the company has very kindly offered to give people who buy as a result of watching this video a 20% discount on the purchase of a flashlight. So I will include the discount code in the information under this video as well, of course, where you can get this flashlight. All the information I gave you on the specs and the modes of operation and the warranty, which is significant. I'll put the warranty information in the bottom as well. So all that information is there if you want to see more on that. So. Do you have any questions? If you do, put them in the comments section below. Do you have any comments from your experience with this flashlight or other flashlights from Wubin? Then please put that in the comments section below. If you look at their website and you see another flashlight you think it, you'd like to see me review, put that in the comments section below. We'll see if Wubin would be interested in sending it to me. Okay, that's all I have to say about the D1 from Wubin Flashlights. Get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.